If you are a residential cleaning business owner and you are tired of the up and down nature of residential and you want to go commercial, or maybe you're doing good residential, you just want to add on some consistent commercial contracts, then this video is for you. What's up, what's up, everybody? Mike Mack here, founder of automatedcleaningbusiness.com and back with another video. And I'm talking to you, residential cleaning business owner, who is maybe just a little bit intimidated about like, where do I even start? Like, should I even do it? Like, is there a downside to going commercial? You know, listen, if you are thinking that, I don't want this to hold you back any longer. So this video is for you. We're not gonna waste any time. This video is all about giving you three reasons that you need to jump headfirst into commercial and why you should not let it intimidate you. We're not gonna waste time. Let's get into it right now. All right, let's start here. Number one, it's the most logical place to start because it's the most common thing I hear for people who are just intimidated from going from residential to commercial. And it's about this idea that it's just somehow more difficult. How do I do it? What's what's that level of clean like? I'm only cleaning houses, but let me, let me put you at ease right now. What you're doing is more personal. And the clean was like really involved and because of that, you got some complaints and you're like, ah, it's just commercial, it's just a headache. No, 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 let me tell you something. Deep cleans, post construction cleans, those are their own thing. What I'm talking about is general office cleaning of let's say a doctor's office. It is so much less involved depending on the price of the contract for what you're gonna be responsible for there versus at a house. So just to give you like a direct comparison, let's compare a house that you would typically clean versus a doctor's office. So in a doctor's office, you may go in there and you're gonna be doing the trash, you're gonna do the restrooms, you're gonna clean reception, you're gonna clean you know, uh, monitors, wipe the back of like computer monitors, wipe the printer screen down, you're gonna do some dusting, look for cobwebs, you know, that's gonna be your general area. Then maybe there's a kitchenette in the background and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna clean off like the, the, the sink and maybe some fingerprints on the refrigerator, you're gonna check the garbage and that's it. You're gonna do all those things, then you hit the floors and then you get out of there. Okay, that's pretty straightforward and it's pretty surface level. Now, when you talk about a house, a house is so much more involved. Like when our clean team comes there, the people we hire, they're amazing, but they're at my house for like five, six hours versus like a commercial space for around the same amount of money per month. That's may blow your mind, but it's so many less hours. So when you compare these two, even at the same square footage, it's not even close. The residential is gonna be so much more of an involved clean. This is why I'm telling you this, because if you already know how to satisfy the needs of your residential clients, you are going to knock it out of the park for your commercial clients. Let's get to the second thing. Okay, the second myth I hear when I talk to residential cleaning business owners that wanna go commercial is it's harder to hire. Now, that is flat out baloney, homie. If anything, not only is it untrue, it's the actual opposite. The reason why I say it's the opposite is because residential cleaning is done during the day. Commercial cleaning is done during the night. So second shift, residential first shift. Typically, you're cleaning houses when people go to work, right? I know there are exceptions, but by and large, that's generally how that's done. For a commercial, you're typically not starting until they leave. Again, there are exceptions, but typically, that's how it's done. So the reason why it's easier to hire for commercial than it is for residential, because for residential, you need to provide a full-time job. Not a lot of people are willing to take a part-time job during first shift. Why? Because that's when most people are working in that shift. So someone's best opportunity to get full-time hours are gonna be in that first shift versus the second shift. See, in commercial, you're much more likely to take that person who has a nine to five and they're looking to just pick up a few hours every week to make an extra $500, maybe even a grand or even $2,000 working a few hours every single night. So because of that alone, you're gonna have a lot less cleaner turnover. So you're not gonna have to worry about constantly looking for new cleaners because it just makes sense. When you find good people with stable jobs who are just looking for extra hours, put them on your commercial cleaning accounts at like 5 p.m. after work or 7 p.m. after work. It's just an easy, easy transition. And these types of folks tend to stay with you for a really long time. So if you're a residential cleaning business owner and you're like, yo, what, what is he talking about? I'm actually, I'm doing, I'm doing well. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about scale. More than anything, this will be a scaling issue because you're gonna have to stack a lot of houses. You're gonna have to 
get a lot of cleaners to do tons of houses to try to match what you can do with a simple commercial cleaning business. So guys, this is why this channel exists because I want to demystify this whole jump to commercial thing. Commercial is much more straightforward and much more simple. Again, I've personally never owned a residential cleaning business, but I have done a few jobs in the early days of my cleaning company because we were just trying to just trying to get some money up and I really didn't have my systems like squared away yet. So, you know, just taking a few residential cleaning jobs made me want to quit my business. So hats off to you if you are running a successful house cleaning business. All I'm trying to tell you is it'd be a lot easier on the commercial side if you know what you're doing. All right, the last thing I'll say here is, you know, when you do apples to apples comparison, there's nothing wrong with residential cleaning businesses at all. And, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not like at all saying it's a bad business, you shouldn't do it. No, I just always look at residential cleaning businesses as the type of business that is great for cash right now, but it's just something that you're never gonna stop feeling like you're hustling with. Now I have friends that own these types of businesses and that's what I hear from them. It never feels like the hustle's over and there's inconsistencies with income. Some, some, some months are great, some months are not so great. Generally they're good still, but my friends don't seem to have the same peace that I have with my commercial cleaning business. Why? Because I don't have thousands of accounts to worry about. I have under a hundred offices, okay? So my point is, if you have way less spaces to worry about, way less cleaners to worry about, you know, you're gonna have less overhead to worry about. And because of that, you're gonna have more profit. So even though residential is definitely a great business and I'm not trying to discourage you from leaving it, my thing is, if you're not feeling like you have that peace, if you're not feeling like your accounts are paying you what you're actually worth, maybe it's time to go commercial. And if you're watching this and you feel like it is time to go commercial, then I want you to comment commercial under this video and I will make videos specifically for you to help you with that transition for residential to commercial. That's all I got for this video. If you found it valuable, hit that like button, subscribe, and check out this video. Peace.